Incoming transmission. Diagnostic complete. Sensors are functioning normally. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you again. Uh, today we're going to go through some due diligence from Super Stonk. It's based upon the sun never sits. The sun never sets on Citadel. This is part two. Uh, and what is good to do is to go through any due diligence and to go through, double check, verify, and continue on with your own research. Just to go through and if anything, if you have a question about anything, go by and research it. That can only help you understand more about what's going on. The whole whole scenario of everything. Wait, I think something's wrong with the color. Hold on, let me just start, try and get this. Okay, there we go. Fix the color here. Gonna go flat gray for a while. Anyway, remove the game, stop going gray. Get, gotta keep gotta keep things this similar. Anyway, if we go through all this, and through all of my research that I'm doing, I'm going through, yes, the popcorn stock, the movie stock, the AMC, doing some own due diligence related to the movie industry but also going back to failure to delivers. And of course, what is the, what's Citadel doing? Because if you look back through the 2008, 2009 crisis, you see Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, they crashed out and everything that happened to them. But I don't think, and I think all of you would probably agree that Citadel is gonna be the one to just crash and burn from this. I mean, that's what everybody hopes, yes, is they crash and burn. And, uh, you know, it goes back to what Dr. Susan Triblo was talking about in one of her tweets online is, well, look, if we're buying if we're buying and holding all the stock just to crash and burn these hedge funds, how are we different from them shorting the stock to crash and burn GameStop and AMC and a couple other companies, right? But I, I agree with a lot of this due diligence that's, that we're going to talk about in a very brief, hopefully four to five minutes, about Citadel's hopefully long-term goals. And it's kind of scary what they're doing. Um... And I've been going through another blog. I'll link, link another blog down below. It goes into a lot about naked shorts, short selling, fail, failure to livers in a few sections. So it's really good to go through and just really just indulge yourself if you have any free time. Just keep going through it all. Anyway, let's get on to this. So basically, Citadel's now positioned to do more than just monopolize securities and transactions. It is positioned to be, now this is the thing, it's to be the market for securities transactions. Okay, you have already, if you know what I'm talking about, you know where they're already situated. Because Citadel's influence in the market is all due to one thing, volume. Now, with any business, the more volume you're able to push through, the more money you make. Same thing with Amazon. Being larger Amazon than started any exchange right way now. Way back, if you now, look this back is in 1999 when the internet started, now, if you take a look started, the suite, they were just getting into Eric. They were just starting to get their distribution centers uh, going. I mean, they're basically renting says, places well, outside WSB of the WSB taker was cost short you know, an estimated 30 billion. Away from it's the also been a monster mall payday for Wall Street. Mall property was like seven dollars a square foot. And the foot, free trade were platforms were able to pay something you know for 30 cents a square foot. And you can imagine this. Get more distribution just centers in there to push the volume, five day volume, 89 Citadel and Virtues combined volume and average spread in all the the cost 265 million dollars. AMC made 60 about 64 million. TR and BB. I mean, total is $350 million, and that is just in volume. Now, why is this important? Well, the, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ view Citadel, Citadel and MEMAX, M-E-M-X, you can go look at them, as a threat. And th this is part of an article posted from their website regarding MEMAX, right? And this is information for them. MEMAX will provide market makers the ability to bypass the exchanges entirely. That's important. Missing ingredient is very simple, compelling is the Memex business model is this. How will Memex keep its members happy if not through profits? All right. Now, the major, major inclusion of this is dark pool operators and the Memex ownership of Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, uh, UB Group. Uh, it just goes on. This makes the path to satisfaction of its members sus <laughs> sufficiently business. to open door the conflict of among firms like the Memex's board. 
the addition of BlackRock from the buy side this rounds up the cast of Wall Street players and through further muddies all the, the trading and everything that they've been doing for the past. Since you throw BlackRock in there, years, and said it all failed to the hedge you fund, know what you've got going on there. They had to now, get again. This is different place. Say this again. We're at a point where major brokers and even exchanges do not know how to function without Citadel. I'll say that again. This is a period of time within the market that major brokerages and exchanges do not know how to function without Citadel. They put themselves in. You'd want a venue, right? Then you can you can manufacture transactions independently. So guess what Citadel wants to do? Hmm? But is Citadel ready? Do they have enough products, buyers, sellers, and supply to be a factory of their own? Right? Think about that. Now, institutional sellers have a price agenda, right? Because volume sellers, they don't want to flood the market given their security, dropping the price as they sell. They want to offload the asset in a course a price friendly way strategic sellers don't want the marketplace to know that they've changed a position they want to keep their transactions private all right now again this is venue think of their how and where they want to do this these sellers want a venue that won't affect their public price and remain private all right and a lot of this has to do with privacy and where do we help you heard of citadel connect that's right you've you've been in the subs for six to eight months and you you probably haven't heard of citadel connect and it's no, it's not a dark pool because, when you, yes, there's a word dark pool again. Because we know right now volume is king. We've seen that with AMC and also GME. The volume offset with the new DTC, DTCC rules and, and, and the other rules that's coming through, uh, the thinner rules with everything, the price to drop in volume. So that's right. Citadel does volume that's considered right now as a securities wholesaler. One of only a few, like basically like Costco or any other wholesale business, it deals in bulk, buying and selling, like what happens in dark pools. They buy large quantities because you don't want people to know if you're buying large quantities to offset the market price. But Citadel can deal also in small transactions too. Now here are four good points of this, all right, of why the aspect of why it can be a good venue. It has market advantage with its volume of clients. It has an ease of access. All right, it has privacy and pricing advantage, and also it already has already has a market presence and advantage. So right now, Citadel's moving beyond the market maker role and it's captured a massive portion of all these security transactions, moving them off the exchange. For an undisclosed portion of transactions, Citadel is the market, right? So when you say the venue, don't need it. Citadel is the market. Now I'll go through in another video and talk about the rest of this due diligence because it goes into a lot more detail about the two kinds of different markets that the SEC can look at, regulate, and ones they can't regulate. And of course, which one they can choose, one they can't regulate. So anyway, this is just some due diligence that's on SuperSunk. I'm gonna list everything down below. It's a great read. I'm gonna list some other uh, due diligence that I've run through that I've basically ran through and discovered through a blog, uh, talks about FTDs, naked short selling, and uh, what we can do as retail investors, because that is about this whole movement. And I'll get into that hopefully in another later video. But to all about you, thank you, have a great day, and uh, stay strong by the dip.